Welcome back everyone to your C programming tutorial series. By now, I'm sure you guys are C experts, so I'm gonna stop explaining things and just start typing. Kidding, but it seems like that's what a lot of people on YouTube do and it drives me crazy, so I'm gonna... Uh, I don't even know what I'm talking about, let's just get started. <laughs> this is where we left off in the last video, and I'm just gonna clean up some junk, so we don't need like any of this junk. <laughs> and then we are going to condense this down to one line, as we learned we can do. So now we have two variables, and I told you that the value of y is going to be 5. But, you know, I could be deceiving you. How, do you. how do you know the value of y is 5? Well, this video, I'm going to teach you how to print the value of these variables to the console. Oh, I'm also going to get rid of this crap down here. So let's just try going down here and let's just print a number, okay? We'll print 9001. And now, let's save the program by hitting escape to get out of insert mode. And then type in colon... WQ and we'll compile that GCC subscribe dot C oh crap what it was what is all this these are compiler errors the compiler is basically saying bro quit being an idiot make sure your program is correct before you tell me to compile it and then I'll compile it <laughs> stop being a noob so let's go back in there and fix our problem so we'll go back into vim and the problem is that we can't just print a number. I know it sounds stupid, but you just can't do it. All right, that's a rule. Just deal with it. So to print a number, you have to type in some extra stuff before the number. So follow me, go into insert mode, and put double quotes and then a comma. So let me get my stupid cursor out of the way. You can see we're passing in a string and then a comma, which says, hey, we're going to give you some extra information. And then we're giving the number. Well, what goes in this string here is what's important. And that is called a format string. This string right here is called a format string. Inside of the format string, we can put format or conversion characters. Because we need to convert this number into a form that the console allows. So to do that, we have to put percent sign %i for integer. So that is how you print a number. We'll hit escape and save the program and exit, and now let's try compiling. Okay, we still have an issue. We got some period or something floating around, so let's go back in there and fix it. And this brings up a good point. This will usually tell you about where it's wrong. So we can look for these lines and columns. So we can go back in Vim, and you can see on line 11, go, we're currently on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, column 2. There is a period. It's not supposed to be there. <laughs> So we got that fixed. We can escape and save and then compile. And now let's output it. And you can see the number outputted right there. But we want it to be on its own line. So to do that, go back into Vim. And after the percent %i conversion character, go into insert mode and put a backslash n, which as you've learned is the new line character. So that'll put it on its own line, but you know, I don't really want to print out this random number here. I want to print out the variables that we already have created. Because these are technically just variables storing an integer, we can use the value y wherever an integer is expected. And just like this is an integer, we could replace that with y. So let's just go over here and do that. So if we did everything right, this should print out the value five. So let's save and compile, and then run. And you can see the value five is right there. Another thing is that anytime you change any of the code, even if it's just something super, super small, you have to recompile using GCC. That's because this a.out is actually a file. If you say ls, you can see that the file exists right here. And when you don't compile, even if you change this file right here, this file stays the same. In order to update this one, you have to compile this one. So anytime you make a change, be sure to compile. The next thing I wanted to do is rather than just printing out this random number, I wanted it to give some kind of description like, hey, the magic number is five or something like that. So let's figure out how to do that. Let's go back into our code and we can just add it to our string inside of printf. It's really simple. So literally the value of y is just going to be imputed into this location inside of this string, which is gonna be printed. So it's gonna say the magic number is colon five. 
and then it's going to go down to the next line. Every time we have something in here separated by a comma, these are known as arguments, so we're passing two arguments to the printf function. We can actually pass more arguments. For example, if we wanted to include x in this, we could do that. For example, we could just start typing here, the value of x is percent %i backslash n, and pass in another argument of x. The reason this is kind of connected right here is because it looks weird here, but in the console it's going to go down to a new line, and then this is going to be the start of a new line, so it's actually going to look pretty cool. So let's compile and make sure everything looks right. The magic number is 5, and the value of x is 10. Awesome. So we got it working. All of our code is working exactly as expected. So hopefully that's cool and satisfying to you guys. In the next video, we are going to be covering... Um, taking input. <laughs> so I will see you then, guys. And be sure to subscribe.